Well, good morning. Thank you for coming out this morning. Let me just say to Leader McConnell, thank you for the opportunity to have this conversation as I approach you about the importance of this issue and ask that you give me an opportunity to share some thoughts. You were kind enough to give me the chance to move this forward and have a real conversation with America about the importance of police reform, accountability, and transparency. And that's exactly what the Justice Act focuses on. It's police reform, accountability, and transparency. Uh, you are also smart enough to put together a really strong group of senators who understand the issue, who have passion about the issue, and also have expertise in different aspects of the Senate. So this is a great team that you've put together, and I appreciate uh, having an opportunity to discuss the important issue of police reform. Uh, let me start by simply saying that too often we're having a discussion in this nation about are you supporting the law enforcement community or are you supporting communities of color? This is a false binary choice. It, the answer to the question of which side do you support, it's I support America. And if you support America, you support restoring the confidence that communities of color have in institutions of authority. If you support America, that means you know that the overwhelming uh, number of officers in this nation want to do their job go home to their family. It is not a binary choice. This legislation encompasses that spirit. It speaks to the fact that we believe that the overwhelming number of officers in this nation are good people, working hard, trying to keep order in the communities. Communities of color and people like myself, I've told my story several times, stopped seven times in one year. Uh, that has been said a lot, but I was stopped this year uh, driving while black when I got a warning ticket for using, failing to use my turn signal earlier in my lane change. And so this issue continues, and that's why it's so important for us to say that we hear you. We're listening to your concerns. Uh, the George Floyd incident certainly accelerated this conversation and we find ourselves at a place with a package that I think speaks to the families that I spoke with yesterday who lost loved ones. We hear you. I think this package speaks very clearly to the young person who's concerned when he's stopped by the law enforcement officers. We see you. And so what does this package do? Three major areas. One is on the area we have to have the right information so that we can direct our resources as a federal government to making sure that the outcomes lead to safer officers and safer suspects in the instances of challenges. Uh, that data collection or the information is around making sure that when serious bodily injury occurs or death, that all that information is reported to the FBI. Today, only 40% of the departments report that information to the FBI. We want all that information because when we hear about the Breonna Taylor case in Louisville, Kentucky, we don't have any information around no-knock warrants. So for us to start a conversation with banning no-knocks doesn't sound like a solid position based on any data because we don't have that data. Once we have the information, we can then turn to the training that is necessary to de-escalate situations, the, the duty to intervene, not standing there watching an officer with his knee on the neck, but intervening in those situations. We can train our officers better. We can find ways and mechanisms to de-escalate the situation. So we spend a lot of time uh, in the training aspect using the resources of our grants to reduce the, the situations and violence in those situations. And then finally, we look at officer misconduct and the necessity of transparency. We believe that the preservation of records on the local level so that departments within the states have a chance to see, almost like a, a reference check, what the past history of complaints have been against that officer. We do not create a national database. The president's executive order creates basically a national database for that information to flow into. We believe that our policy positions are one that brings the communities of color into a position of stronger uh, understanding and confidence in the institutions of, the, of authority. And we believe that it brings our law enforcement community to a place where they have the resources necessary to de-escalate some of these situations and frankly, 
uh, through James Langford's uh, work on this package, we bring in the opportunity to hire more officers and have more training and have a better perspective on the history. So with that, there's a lot that could be said, but instead of saying more, I'm going to give it over to Senator McConnell. Well, thank you, Tim. Um, even before George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, uh, Senator Scott has made it possible for those of us in the Senate Republican Conference who are not African American to understand that this problem still exists. We learned about his being stopped on numerous occasions well before the events of this year. But the witnessing of the murder of uh, George Floyd and the experience in my hometown of Breonna Taylor certainly brings to the forefront this issue for all Americans, including uh, Senate Republicans. My role as the leader, as you know, is to decide what we're going to do. Uh, floor time is the coin of the realm in the Senate because it does take a while to do almost anything. So what I'm announcing today is after we do two circuit judges who are queued up either this week or early next week, we're going to turn to the Scott bill. I'm going to file cloture on the motion to proceed. And our Democratic friends, if they want to make a law and not just try to make a point, I hope they'll join us in getting on the bill and trying to move forward in the way the Senate does move forward when it's trying to actually get an outcome rather than just sparring back and forth, which you all have seen on frequent occasions by, by both sides. I also want to thank the whole team behind us. Everybody's contributed significantly to this product, but without Tim's leadership, it would not have been possible. And without his leadership, I wouldn't be putting this on the floor. But I want you to know that we're serious about making a law here. This is not about trying to create partisan differences. This is about coming together and getting an outcome. We showed we could do that on the CARES Act. We've shown it on the Great American Outdoor.